my booktube, Lynette here and today's video is going to be the books that I think I might read in the month of May. In May I have three readathons that I'm going to take part in. Uh, one of them is a month long, one of them is a weekend long and one of them is a week long. Um, the Weekend Long and The Week Long are both run by Steph over at Steph Loves. One of them is a public readathon and that is Final Book Support Group. That is running the first weekend in May and that is a long weekend in the UK here. We have a bank holiday on the Monday. So it's running from Friday the 3rd until Monday the 6th of May. Um, that the aim of that readathon is to continue or complete series that you already have in progress. Um, I am in the process of updating my uh, series list that I have um, because I have a spreadsheet that I'm using, um, which is really really helpful. Um, but I am deep diving again into my um, books read, books unread lists and noting everything that's in a series um and yeah i have a lot of series i still have an awful lot of series i don't think that's going to change anytime soon to be perfectly honest with you um i am good very good at starting series i have lots and lots of books on my tbr that are series starters um so yeah i do have i do have a lot so this weekend is definitely going to be fully dedicated to continuing one series if not more uh the second readathon that steph is doing is for her patrons um and it's an f1 based readathon and it's the box box uh, which is based around pit stops uh if you do or don't know anything about formula one um and the aim of that is to read the books on our shelves that we receive from book boxes. I have quite a few books on my TBR for, for that I've received from book boxes over the years. Um, I thought I didn't, and then kind of because I was I was thinking Fairy Loot and Aluma Crate and, and Owl Crate and all those big um, names that if you spend any time on YouTube you will hear about. Completely forgetting that actually I went for some smaller uh, book boxes a few years ago. Um, I used to receive the Book Box Club um, box uh, during 2019-2020 and then I also, uh, last year I received a couple of boxes from the Romance Reader Book Box. So I definitely have some books to get to. Um, I have quite a few of those left on my shelves. So. I'll be getting to some of those. And then the final readathon is being run by Lexi over at Books with Lexi. This is a month long readathon and it is Escape the Readathon. It's based around her TBR game that she plays every month um, where she has to escape a game board. Um, and basically, we've all been stuck in a carnival, we've all picked a team. And we have to read books to enter buildings within the carnival and then we're going to have to read books to earn points to get us out of those buildings and at some point, hopefully, we escape the readathon, we escape the carnival. Um, the escape the readathon, there are prompts, um, but again, it's not, it is basically you can pick whatever you want to read. That you don't have to read certain genres, you can read whatever you want um, and when you finish reading it you have to report the book um, in for the that you've read and which prompt you want to set it against. So you don't have to think about it in advance if you don't want to, you can get to the end of a book and then pick whichever um, one you feel it um, relates to. Each genre is going to open a building um, or each prompt rather will open up a building. Um, and once you hit a certain number of books read mm -hmm. and yeah so if you start a book thinking okay this this will fit for this prompt um and then you get to the end of the book and actually that prompt you've already got into the room so you don't need points to get into that room anymore if it fits for another prompt for a room that you haven't got into yet you can always report it for that instead so you don't have to report it up front which is really good and it allows you to mood read um as much as you like and 
Mood reading is definitely where I am at at the moment. I do have some books I'm going to show you that will potentially fit um, for the uh, final book support group and also the box box readathon. Um, and then other than that, I just have my two, um, I have my book club and I have a pre-order coming in that I know I'm going to want to get to when it, I have it at the end of the month. So let's talk about the actual book, shall we? Let's get into those. So the um, book club pick for this month is The Diviners by Libba Bray. I cannot remember a single thing about it. I know it was a bit of a booktube darling about seven, eight years ago now, I think. Um, so, and I don't think I ever heard anything bad about it at that time. So I'm looking forward to picking that up, uh, especially as a uh, spoiler for my April wrap up, I did duck out of the April pick because I just couldn't face trying that reader, that author again. It's not an author I want to force myself through. So I did duck out. So um, I have taken one of my passes for that. So, but I am looking forward to coming back to the discussion in May with The Divine. The other book that I know I'm going to want to read this month, absolutely 100%, is Hera by Jennifer Saint. If you saw my most anticipated books for 2024 that went up last week, I think, when you're seeing this, um, then you'll know that this was on there. This comes out on the 23rd of May. It is a Greek mythology retelling, and this time Jennifer Saint is diving into the goddess Hera. And yeah, I am, and I very luckily have seen um, a booktuber who I know is very um, experienced in the world of mythology because it's what they actually did at university and they have a doctorate in, um, have spoken very, very highly. They had an advanced copy of this and they've spoken very, very highly of it and I've seen that. So I'm even more looking forward to it um, because I, I do feel that Jennifer Saint actually does a very good job of telling all these stories from the female perspective and weaving um, more detail and, and, and trying for more detail around those stories and trying to make us see a bit more um, of what would have been what it would have been like at that time from the female perspective um, because a lot of the myths that we see in my worldview are very very male oriented and I have absolutely loved the previous three books um, that I've had from Jennifer Saint so I am I have high hopes for Hera that it's going to be another top read for this year. Let's move on to the readathons and what I potentially will be reading for those. So for final book support group um, I've got a book in my hand that I've had for a week and a half. I took it out from the library um, to continue a series that I'd read the first book of um, recently and that book is The Name of All Things by Jen Lyons. This is book two in the Chorus of Dragons series. This series is, uh, the premise of this series, um, hang on, let's pick up Ruin of Kings. So what if you weren't the hero? So this is following Kirin Damon. He is a young man who um, finds out that things in his world are not all as they seem. It's political fantasy, uh, it has magic, it has dragons, it has sword fights. It pretty much, in my opinion, has everything um, that I would be looking for in um, in a fantasy series. I absolutely love uh, the Realm of the Elderling series by Robin Hobb, which is pretty much the same. It is sword fights, it is dragons, it is sorcery. Um, and this book has it all as well. So... I really enjoyed book one, um, I, very, very slow um, to start with it, but once I kind of got into the second half of the book, as I always find with fantasy, it really picked up for me and I got really invested. Um, I have actually started this, but because I've read less than 50%, I think it is, um, then I can count this towards uh, Lexi's readathon when I get to the end of it. Um, but also it's the second book in a series, it's continuing a series, so my intention is to hang on to this. Even though I want to pick it up and continue reading it, I'm not going to pick it up until Friday the 3rd, and I'm going to try and finish it over that weekend. Um, because 
again I want to get to it my library has the other three books in the series available so I'm fairly certain that as soon as I finish this I'm probably going to go and take out the third book which I think is The Memory of Souls um, but yes I'm very glad that uh, Jade at Jade Ray Reads put me onto this series now even though I was a bit a bit cautious to start with really looking forward to continuing another book in a series that has been calling to me recently and actually would help me with my series statistics is the final book in a duology, the second book in a duology, and that book is These Twisted Bonds by Lexi Ryan. I read the first book in this series, uh, which was These Hollow Vowels, um, a few years ago now. I actually had it, I was very lucky to get it as an arc from NetGalley. Unfortunately, NetGalley didn't give me um, an arc of These Twisted Bonds um, when I requested it uh, when I was really hyped for it and then I didn't actually get a hold of it because I then had the paperback copy of these hollow vowels I didn't get a copy of this until late last year um but I really enjoyed these hollow vowels it was a really good book it's fey fantasy romance um it's a human in a fey world and uh she's torn between um the Seely Court and the Unseely Court, a prince in each, and I really like the end of it. I, although this is a duology and I'm excited to continue it, I would have been quite happy with how book one ended um, because it felt like an ending as well. So, but also I think there were questions um, left open, which hopefully will be answered in this book. Um, but it's about Brie um, and it's continuing with is she going to choose good or is she going to choose bad? Um, we'll see where it goes. But this is another one that if I manage to get through the whole of The Name of All Things, I might be able to get through um, or at least start this uh, during that weekend for Final Book Support Group and maybe knock a series off of the in progress list. So now I'm going to talk about some potential selections for the Box Box Readathon. Um, the first couple of books I'm going to show you are from the Romance Readers Book Box and I've picked these because uh, of the signing book signing that I'm going to in July. Uh, these authors will be at that signing and as you'll potentially know from previous wrap up, I am trying to get through quite a few of those books. Now this first author isn't technically going as an author to sign. This is the lady who actually runs the Romance Readers book box. Um, she is going as a vendor but I'm still excited to meet her um, and I might actually visit the table and just kind of get her because I'm not um, getting books signed I might just get her to sign my notebook um, especially if I read and enjoy this book but the book that I've got is Amour by H.L. Packer and um, this is I think it's kind of a dark romance um, it's definitely fated romance um, and yes uh, it sounds a bit like two people thrown together um from different sides who so it's not quite enemies to lovers but i don't think they are exactly friends either um so i think it might be more a forced proximity thing um but yes hl packer heather packer she is going to be there with the book box so potentially get her to sign my book hopefully i will enjoy this as well and the second book that i have from an attending author is The Two Halves of My Heart by Rachel DeLoon. Rachel DeLoon is one half of Heart, the Heart DeLoon reading, uh, writing partnership. Um, both Rachel and Charlotte E. Hart are both going to be attending, but I've only got um, the book by Rachel. This is about a young man who, as a boy, meets his two best friends, and as he grows up, he realises that actually he's in love with the both of them. And he feels that he has to make a choice and it's the impact of the choices that the three of them make and where it leads them into the future um so it's um i don't think it's why choose um and but it is love triangle but I, it's love triangle going in you know from the synopsis that this is it 
um, so there shouldn't be any surprises by that. So I get, I mean, love triangles aren't something I particularly am a fan of. I wouldn't normally gravitate towards them. It's only because this came in a book box um, that I am looking at picking this up. So we'll see um, where we go and hopefully I can get this read, get this off the TBR because it's from last year. Um, and also it'll count towards box box. The final entry for box box that I have, although I have way more than this, I have a few up here, I have some right down at the bottom, um, and obviously I have lots more romance books, um, but the one that I've actually picked up, and it's because it's a book in progress, and it did come in uh, a book box, it came from the book box club, um, I had book one and two from them and I've read book one so this is also continuing a series because normally when there's a final book support group round on I try and do it monthly um, but my plans have had to change a little bit so I'm definitely only going for the weekend this time but this would fulfill um, a series continuation for me as well as Box Box and that book is The, the Girl in the Tower by Catherine Arden. This is the second book in the series um, the Bear and the Nightingale is the first book. The Winter of the Witch is the third. I have all three. Um, I have started it, but it will still count for Lexi's readathon um, because it's under the limit for what you could read. And I will try and hold off picking this up until the week of the Box Box readathon. But yes, this is about a young girl who um, in, and it who can see. Um, the Russian folklore um, figures who help keep the land running, um, who are gradually being pushed out by the progress of religion, organised religion, um, in this case kind of Catholicism I think, Roman Catholicism, um, not sure, or it might be uh, Christianity, but pushing into Russia um, and taking over and getting rid of all the old Russian myths and it's about what she's doing from there because she can see all those uh, which are now classed as demons and I think there's a bit of a romance there with uh, the frost um, demon um, and yeah so I'm I like I say I've started it I, I've enjoyed what I've read of it so far I can't remember why I put it down I think it was because I had to do something else at the time um and something else took over so looking forward to getting this one finished as well because I did adore the bear and the nightingale when I read it a few years ago um and I should have carried on with the girl in the tower at that point but although I have the paperback in my hand the actual book that came they they sent it to us at the time that the girl in the tower was being released and they sent us a hardback copy and if you know anything about me, you know that I don't like having my series in different formats. I like to have them all in the same format. So if I start a series in paperback, I will wait for the paperback release of the follow-ups. If I start an ebook, I will continue it in ebook unless I absolutely adore it and invest in the paperback copies. Um, and then I'll continue in paperback. If I start it in hardback, then I will spend a small fortune on continuing it in hardback because I want them to look pretty on my shelves next to each other and if they're in different formats, they don't as far as I'm concerned. Um, so yes, so definitely looking forward to continuing The Girl in the Tower. And as I said, I have many more books on my TBR. Um, so I've got the two books there that I want to read by authors attending the signing that I'm going to. I need to read quite a few more of those. So the rest of the month might be actually padded out by picking up those. Um, I'm not 100% certain, um, but yeah, that's my that's my loose TBR. Those are books that could potentially be read. Um, what about you? Are you taking part in Lexi's readathon or uh, Steph's readathon? Let me know in the comments down below. Um, do you have any solid plans, or are you a mood reader like me? Let me know. If you have enjoyed this video, then please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you are enjoying my videos and you're not already, then subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of me in your feed. And I will look forward to seeing you in my next one. Bye.